Uh, my name is Deb Farrington from the University of Minnesota. work for the Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Neurosciences. I am um, going to talk about our discovery that the mitochondria in the retinal pigment epithelium is damaged early in AMD. And we have a lot of evidence to support that, my lab and other labs um, also. So we've looked at the proteome of the retinal pigment epithelial cells and that gave us our first indication about 15 years ago that we should target the mitochondria as far as investigations. And then we followed up with a long extension PCR assay looking at mitochondrial DNA damage and we saw that the damage was occurring very early in the disease. And this is exciting because it offers an opportunity for intervention early in the disease, possibly to curtail the progression of AMD. And so now um, in um, cultures of primary cultures of human um, retinal pigment epithelial cells, our latest publication showed that donors with AMD, their cells, um, the mitochondria, had reduced function. So it all ties into a very nice story that the mitochondria might be the Achilles heel of the retina, at least for AMD. And so our focus now is really looking at various drugs that might improve mitochondrial function and we've started doing that drug testing in the, both the primary cultures as well as IPS RPE that we have been able to uh, develop from uh, patients in the clinic. And the long-term goal would be to have a battery of drugs that we could test for each patient, um, their IPS RPE, and determine which drugs are best for each patient because what we're seeing is a lot of variability in response in our primary cultures as well as our IPS RPE. So this might allow the clinician to provide very targeted and personalized medicine for patients. And that's our main goal is to try to find a treatment for the dry form of AMD. Are you doing any genetic testing? And what factors are being looked at to determine what medications may be most effective? We are going to be genotyping just minimal genotyping for the CFH um, risk variant as well as ARMS2 since those two risk variants are um, provide the greatest risk for AMD. Uh, we aren't doing any other testing at this point, but of course we could in the future. But the idea is that it might not just be the risk alleles for AMD that determines whether you react one way or another to a drug. It probably is a whole combination of your genetic background. And that's where the IPS RPE are so valuable is that they match, of course, the patients, completely match the patient's genetic background. So that's the idea of using the IPS RPE for drug testing. Which drugs are you looking at? We're just starting testing now. Basically, we've looked in the literature. There's been about 80 drugs identified that will improve mitochondrial function, and we're starting with those drugs. But initially, we started simply with an acetylcysteine, rapamycin, and PQQ, pyriloquinolone quinone, PQQ. It's easier. And those drugs will protect the mitochondria, um, in, uh, increase uh, removal of damaged mitochondria, and increase biogenesis. All three drugs are quite effective in improving mitochondrial function in our cell cultures, but again, each patient uh, or each donor had a different response. So that's where you really, and we're going to increase the, the number of drugs that we test to at least 20 once we narrow down the field to see what's going to work in um, RPE cells. How long will you be in this phase of your research? We hope, so there's a lot to do. Once we settle on, say, those 10 or 20 compounds that we would regularly test patient cells on, the next step then is to uh, partner with pharmaceutical companies for formulation. And also, drug delivery to the back of the eye is also very challenging. So those are two areas that we don't have the capacity in my lab to do that I'm going to have to partner with someone. But right now we're in kind of a proof of principle phase where we have um, seven different patients in the clinic who volunteered uh, biopsies for us and we have their cells. Uh, we want to show that we can actually, we've been able to show that we can grow the cells, make IPS, and now we're doing the drug testing. So kind of proof of principle, we're almost finished. Now narrowing the <clears throat> 
possibility of drugs, that battery of drugs, and then linking up with a pharmaceutical company for formulation of those. And then I would say within possibly two years, this could become a reality. We're also, because it's so expensive to make these IPSRPE, we're also um, developing a way to automate the process. We were given a large donation um, by one of our uh, philanthropic donors to actually buy two TCAN robots. And so we're also doing that in parallel with just kind of the hands-on. But I think within the next six months, we should be able to automate almost the entire process, which should save quite a lot of money. Again, that's to make it feasible as a, a treatment modality, you have to reduce the cost. And so that's what we're working on too. Are you looking at a particular drug delivery system as well? Well, that's, that's what I don't know yet. Um, I know that there's been a couple of publications on N-acetylcysteine being used as an eye drop that actually gets to the retina. So that possibly uh, eye drops if the pharmacokinetics is correct. And again, this is where I would need to um, get the expertise from a pharmaceutical company to know what would be the best way to deliver. Luckily, um, there's a high blood flow in the back of the eye, so it's possible that oral delivery will be enough. But again, it depends on the compound and its solubility and so forth, and whether we can get it to the highest the concentration we need in the back of the eye.